Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here, and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. This is part two of the three-part lighting and rendering series that we're doing. In this one, we're going to cover how to actually build out materials. And if you have your file from part one, you can just continue working off of that. But the setup where we left off that tutorial is also on our site if you want to grab that before you get started. Also in the files are all the texture maps that we're going to be using. So make sure to grab that if you want to follow along exactly as we do. All right, let's get into part two. So currently we have this nicely lit set of gray sh spheres. And we just want to give some more complex materials. I'm not trying to make this look photorealistic at all. I'm just trying to make it look like something tangible. So in our matnet, I'm going to drop something called a material builder and name it primary. I'm going to drag this onto our main sphere. So inside the builder, you can actually build out custom shaders. And you could do this on the upper level as well, but doing it inside the builder actually allows you to just package it up into one node, makes things cleaner and easier to copy around. So I'm going to just start with a principled shader and hook the output surface to this shader and hit render. And you can see that all we did is make our main sphere darker since by default, this ships at 20% gray instead of the 50% gray we made. You can adjust all these options to achieve different looks, but the main ones I touch for motion graphics work are diffuse to change the base color, roughness, which adds some variation to the surface's specularity, uh, and then bump to make it feel like it's not perfectly smooth. So let's just start with color. I'm gonna drop a texture node and select the file that we have called shapes. Note that this works because I already have UVs set up on the geometry, which you do need when you're working with texture maps. Now I want to change the size of the shapes. So you can drop down a bind set to three float vector, type UV, and plug it in at the top of the texture node. And now I'm going to drop a multiply constant and set it to 1.5 so that it repeats and scales down the overall look. Next, I want to add color so it's not just black and white. So I'm going to make a ramp parameter and name it ramp base. Then if you hop back up, that's where you can actually adjust the ramp. So I'm going to give it a ramp from purple-ish to a red gradient. Nice. Now I'm going to pause the render and show you here in the main object that I have this dist attribute, which you can see if I hook up to the CD, it's just a ramp from this one point that I chose to the base, like all around the sphere. So we actually want to use this attribute to be able to change the material. And I'm going to disconnect it from the CD and head back over into our material builder. So we're actually going to blend between two textures. So I'll drag this texture and ramp setup that we have. I'm going to rename the ramp to ramp gap. And I'm going to attach that to the diffuse now just so we can visualize this new texture. I'm going to grab the that circles grid texture from our folder. And I'm going to hop up and adjust this new ramp. And I'm going to do this one as red to yellow. Now. Back inside, I'm going to drop a mix node to blend the two materials. Right now, you can see that it perfectly just blends the materials together. That's because it's using this bias slider and mixing it 50-50. But you can actually plug attributes or even other textures in here to determine how to blend materials. So I'm going to actually bind our dist attribute and hook that up to the bias. And now you can see from this point on, we have a nice smooth ramp between them, but I actually want to get like a harder edge. So I'm going to drop a fit node and I'm going to bring it from around 0.3 to 0.32 to remapping that to zero to one. And then we'll have like a nice hard edge giving this sphere. And now the last thing I want to do is I don't want the 
blend between the two shaders to be so perfectly round. So I'm going to drop an anti-aliased noise and attach the P to the surface globals. And then before the fit, I'm going to add this in and bring the amplitude down and the frequency up a little bit. Great. Now I'm liking the way this looks, so I'm going to move on to the roughness. So for that, I'm going to drop another texture and I'm going to grab that concrete roughness and then do a vector of float and a fit to be able to adjust. What I like to do for the roughness is actually hook this up to the diffuse just to see what we have going on. And I'm going to bring the range from 0.25 to 0.5. Now to explain how roughness works, a value of zero means that it's going to be perfectly smooth. It's going to reflect things without you're going to see them like a mirror. And with a value of one, it's going to soften those reflections so that the highlights are less distinguishable. So what's black here is going to be the most reflective and what's white will be the least. And I want what's currently black to actually be soft. So I'm going to set the zero to 0.45, which is pretty soft. And then the white areas, I do want them to be a little reflective. So I'm going to make that around 0.15. Now, if you hook that up to the roughness and hook back our original diffuse. Now, you can zoom in here on the highlights. And if I screenshot and unplug the roughness, you can see that the roughness map is doing, just kind of breaking up the sharpness and making it less even. So next, we're going to do normals <laughs> or bump. So these add some bump onto the surface but they don't actually displace it. So in the bump and normals tab, you click enable and by default, it's set to normals as opposed to bump. Normal maps work better than bumps because they store the direction which the light should hit. Whereas bumps are just a black and white map of up and down. They typically look a little faker. So I'm gonna grab that concrete normals map we have. And again, doing a screenshot and comparing, you can see that it just adds a bit of unevenness to the surface, making it feel like you could actually run your hand across and feel something. And the last thing I wanna do on our main sphere is add some dimensional separation between the red and purple areas. To do this, I'm gonna use displacement. So I'm gonna make a displacement node, hooking the P and the N up to the globals add a fit node after our remapped dist and attach it to offset. Change the type to bump and attach that to the displacement output. I'm just looking for something subtle. So in the fit, I'm gonna change the max to 0.05. And I am liking this. It just gives us a nice separation. And I'm gonna call that good on our main sphere. So now let's head, hop back up and make a new material builder for the small ones and drag that onto those. I'm gonna go inside our first material and grab the principled shader and the roughness setup since I just wanna use what we already set up there in the small ones. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it into our new builder. And I want different colors on the sphere so each of these are different solids. Now in my setup, I assigned each one a random value based on ID. So I'm going to bind in the ID. And if you just add a multiple constant, that way we can use that as a seed later on, add a random node, and then a ramp, and hook that to the diffuse. Now I'm going to pop out, I'm going to change the interpolation of both of these colors to constant. And now I'm just going to add a few colors, uh, some purples, some maybe some red, some yellow, just whatever you want but the way this is going to work is since it's completely random you're basically setting up a percentage of how much of each color you want as you slide it now i want the materials to feel slightly different between the different spheres as well so i'm going to copy down the multiply constant and the random and i'm just going to change the seed and if you hook that to the metallic attribute 
you can see that we actually start to get some of these metallic looking spheres, but I don't want it to be such a smooth ramp of kind of metallic, kind of metallic, very metallic, you know, I want it to be all or nothing essentially. So I'm going to do another fit range and fit it from 0.8 to 9, 2.9. <laughs> and so that we only have a few that are metallic. Now, one last thing I want to do is you can see in my render these little glints. And what these are are me doing little gold X's, which I put there just to show you how we can actually blend not just textures, but actually full materials. So to do this, we're going to start by creating a gold material by doing a second principled shader. And I'll just hook that up to view just so we can set it up. I'm going to uncheck use point color and I'm going to make it like an orangish yellow. So turn metallic to one and you've essentially got gold. Of course, you could use maps to make this a little nicer, but since we're just using it as a little glints, this is great. Now drop a layer mix node and hook that orange layer mix up to the A and the B in it. So make a texture node and use the X's texture. Now bind in the UVs, setting it to three float and multiply constant it by 0.5 to change the size. And now just do a vector to float and a fit, swapping the zero and one and plug that into the alpha of this mix. Now you can see we can't actually hook this out to our output. So you need to convert this from a layer to a shader. So to do that, just drop a compute lighting and hook up these to the output surface output. And then that surface output will go to the shader. Hit render and you can see what I'm talking about. We have these little gold X's across our spheres. This just gives it like a little highlight. It's also just a fun way, um, you know, to blend different materials. It's cool to give like metallic stripes or something like that. And there you have it. That's our little introduction to building materials in Houdini. Of course, we could dive deeper and I'm sure we will in future tutorials. Um, but we're going to call this good for now. In the next part of this three-parter, we're going to be setting this up to a render. We're going to figure out how to set up render passes. And then we're going to composite it all together. Again, if there's any effects you'd like to see in the tutorials after this series, please send them to me in the comments. The project files for this are on the site. Hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time.